All right, today's video is about rendering beeswax and the process I use to do so. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated than it needs to be for me. Uh, this is the first time I've ever done it and I'm going to be refining the process in the future, but for now, this is what I do. All right, if you've watched some of my previous videos, you'll see that I did a cutout of a beehive in a house here a little while back. And along with that, I ended up with a bunch of comb that needs to be rendered down into raw beeswax. I can use that beeswax later to put on frames uh, for bees and help them to establish their hive easier. There's also a lot of comb that had honey in it that was unusable other than to give back to the bees. Now the comb that I could use, I strapped onto these empty frames with rubber bands to hold in place. And that way the bees don't have to draw out new comb. They can just go right to work uh, laying eggs and putting resources in it. So I basically took all of the messy honeycomb and put in these five gallon buckets. So once I get it home, I use my hands and kind of crush up the honeycomb and release the honey from the cells. And uh, then I put it in this sieve device and it sits and drips down through it and separates the honey from the honeycomb. Now I do this because I'm going to stick this in the hive and let the bees have it back. But if I just stick raw honeycomb in there, it'll drip all down through the hive and make a big old mess and possibly overwhelm the bees. So I'll feed this raw honey back later, but right now I'm gonna separate it. This is what the comb looks like after it's set overnight and drained. It's still sticky with honey, but the vast majority of it has dripped down. Now a lot of this honey is unusable for humans. Uh, this hive was in the house for over eight years. So, you know, eight years of tons of bees crawling all over the comb uh, just gets the comb dirty and nasty. You can see how black this comb is. That's from just years and years of use. Uh, babies after babies after babies being born in it and bringing in dirt from workers and stuff like that. So, you know, that honey has taken on a flavor that's not very pleasant and it's just not usable. You'll, you'll never separate all that dirt and stuff out of the honey. So bees don't mind, they'll take it right back. What I've done here is just added a medium honey super on top, which made an open cavity up in the top of the hive. And I dump all this comb in here. And then of course you gotta clear the, uh, the top entrance there so the bees can come up out of the hive into this honeycomb. And they'll just walk up in here and they will clean every drop of honey off of this and it'll be dry as a bone uh, in a couple days. So once the bees have cleaned all the honeycomb, I take it out and I put it in these containers and I just let it sit out there so the bees can kind of finish picking over it. And once I dump this honeycomb in there, there's some residual honey in the bottom of the bucket. And it don't take long for all the bees in the yard to find it. They basically pile in there and stack on top of each other and smash each other down into the honey. It's like a giant mud wrestling competition, but with honey. And the bees will easily drown. So the only way to really save them is to dump them out onto a flat surface. Now they're all covered in honey. You can kind of see it glistening off their wings. And what they're gonna do is go around and clean each other. Uh, they kind of gotta do this because you know they're not gonna survive if they can't breathe. They're covered in honey. You'll notice they're all cleaning each other. So, if you listen real close, though, you can hear them uh, and what they're saying. What? This is a few days later, and we're removing the same comb you just saw me put in there. And you can see they've picked it completely clean. Look at the amount of bees that are in there. Uh, they've taken every bit of that residual honey and moved it back down into the hive where they can use it. So once you've got it all dry like this, it's time to boil it. Get about four inches of water in the bottom of a big deep pan and start it boiling. Now I would recommend using 
uh, utensils and pans and anything you use, make it specific to this process because you cannot get beeswax off of something to save your life. It's just a mess. Like I got this pan for six, seven bucks at Walmart. So anyway, get a good rolling boil going and just start dropping your comb in there and let it boil. There's a lot of extra junk in old honeycomb like this. Uh, whenever a larvae pupates, uh, it leaves capsules and, and material in there. You can kind of see the little shiny bits. Uh, that's just excess material that's not gonna melt down in the water. And all the dirt and debris, uh, pieces of whatever, there's a bunch of dead bees that are mixed in. It all just kind of settles to the top in these pots. And, looks horrendous. Uh, definitely don't want to eat this pot of beans. Now once it's been boiled real good, it's time to start separating the junk from the wax. You can kind of see the yellow wax floating on the surface there and coating the stick. I definitely recommend a lid. Keep it from splashing all over the place. There's all the junk that needs to come out. So I use a little strainer and just kind of shake it a little bit. And I also try to press it out and get what I can out of it, basically. Definitely don't want to let, uh, as much as you can, you don't want to let it go to waste. There's a lot of wax that's retained in this material. And you get all this junk out and then just toss the junk. Also, if you have any way of doing this outside, that would probably be best. It makes quite the mess. But the next day after it's cooled down, here we have hardened wax. And the bees have already found it. So you just basically take your pot and dump it in all the nasty water. And there's your block of beeswax. And a lot of the nasty will be retained on the back of it. So I just like to take a scraper and just kind of scratch off what I can of it and uh, try to get it as clean as possible. That'll make the next process just a little bit easier. So for the final part of the process, I took a empty bee frame and just attached some screen to it with staples. Then filled a turkey pan with water, something I can throw away. Then I lined this with paper towels, two different layers. And then I just stack these chunks in here. And so all the excess debris in there will melt down through it inside the oven. Just try to stack them on here the best you can. And I got a pretty good pile. And you slide it into the oven. I put a layer of aluminum foil underneath of it to catch any possible drippage uh, since the B-frame overlaps. And then checking on it, uh, you can see that it's slowly melting and dripping down through the uh, paper towels. And after the process is over with, this is what you're left. As you can see, the dirt didn't penetrate the paper towel. It all just stays on the surface and the wax just runs right through. Now some wax is lost to the paper towel, but that's all right. The majority of it we, we got. So you can see a little bit of dirt made it through to the second layer, but the second layer stopped it. And there's a little bit of heavy buildup in certain spots. But whatever you do, don't throw this stuff away. These things make great fire starters. Wax covered paper towels is just like a giant candle. 
tear it up into little sheets, something that you can store easily and travel with. Easy to throw in a backpack and uh, use as a fire starter. And being that it's covered in wax, it's waterproof. Dunk it in water, pour water over it, no problem. A little bit of water residue on the outside makes the flame just take a second to catch, but once it does, burns great. And it'll sit there and burn slowly as it consumes the wax over the paper towel. Just wedge it in a fire and you're good to go. And I like to square them all up, throw them in a giant Ziploc, take the air out of them, and store them. Checking back in on the wax, you can see it's starting to harden. And it looks like there was a little dripping going on. All right, now that the wax is hardened overnight, we're gonna drain the water out of the pan and find out real quick that this stuff is stuck to this turkey pan <laughs> like glue. It took a little bit of manipulation, but finally got it to break loose. And voila, you got a big chunk of wax. Now the thing I use beeswax for is to put on empty frames that are going in the hive. The frames are made out of plastic and the bees recognize the plastic as a foreign material so sometimes they're reluctant to build on them. And by adding some of their own beeswax to the plastic, it encourages them to build. Now if you don't have the beeswax on it, sometimes it can look like this. This is the plastic and then they'll build a section that's raised up off of the plastic that they can travel underneath. It's almost like they don't want to touch the plastic. So now the question is what to do with this big chunk of wax. So I've got some molds and you got to get yourself some canola oil or cooking spray, something that can help release it. You can buy a special spray just for releasing uh, stuff from molds. I like to take a little paper towel and just kind of dab the excess out of it uh, so it don't mess with the molding process. And then heat up your wax. Uh, admittedly, this is not the best pan for this. It doesn't pour evenly and it goes all over the place. Made quite the mess doing this. But uh, like I said, we'll refine this in the future. Fill up your mold and uh, let it cool. Next thing you know, you got one ounce bars of beeswax. You can throw these in a Ziploc bag pretty easily and store them and use them whenever you're ready if you want to do candles or add them to uh, bee frames later on. Whatever you want to do, they're uh, easy, compact. Just grab you a handful of them, throw them in, melt them down, and use them however you need. Now you can also do candles, and this here is just a little test thing that I did. I rolled up a piece of paper towel and uh, dipped it. You see it makes a little candle you can get a kit made specifically for making candles but uh, anyway stick her down here and we'll light her up and see what she does large block of wax can be really hard to deal with. So making it manageable like this is a lifesaver. They also have other molds. This is a silicone mold. It's very pliable and it releases the wax so well. Uh, I wish I could find a one ounce bar mold that's silicone. This is the wax drying uh, time lapse. And you end up with, with uh, bars like this. I'm not sure how many ounces each of these are but uh, much better than a big block.
All right, so that's my process for rendering beeswax from raw honeycomb to finished product. Uh, like I said, there'll be some refining to this technique as I've come up with new ideas and, and try different things. Uh, but for now, that's how I do it. Now, one thing I will say is this is really messy and I had to do a lot of cleanup uh, as I went. Uh, thank goodness for a solid cooktop that I could clean wax off of real easy with a razor blade. Uh, but if you can do this outside, I would recommend that. Uh, the only caution I would give you is if you're using a uh, Bunsen burner or something, you know, something with a flame, uh, wax is flammable. So, you know, be careful with that. You don't want to have yourself a, a raging fire to deal with also. Uh, so anyway, if you liked how I did this and you like videos like this, then subscribe. And uh, if you could do me a solid and help me out, hit the like button. All right. Y'all have a good one. Bye.